Hey gang, it's Jay, and we are coming at you from the house. Um, several of you have requested a video on making the um, the cover for the barrel shroud, the barrel shroud cover. So um, I have my extra barrel shroud that I made, and I have a whole supply of materials from just normal fabric. Uh, this is the same uh, cotton canvas that I used on the original one that you see there. And then I have cordage for it for doing the ties on it. I have all of my grommets to put on. My grommet setting tool there. I have my cord lock for putting, for securing the uh, the wrap or the tie, I have some super glue. For I this is my this is my cheat. Um, I don't um, I didn't stitch my old one. I glued it, so that's what I'm gonna do here with my two separate pieces of fabric. And then I have I have scissors for cutting everything. And then I have my beer koozie. This is what I used for the padding and the insulation portion of it because um, the whole idea of a barrel shroud is twofold. Number one is for protecting the barrel of the rifle itself and number two is for protecting your hands so that if you are sustaining um, a high rate of fire the, the barrel tends to get hot. So it's um, as uh, I'm, I'm sure you guys have if you've shot a whole bunch um, you go to grab the barrel of the rifle and it's it's hot. So um, this here acts as our insulation. So I'm sure if you guys are like me, you enjoy a bevy every now and then. So you have your you have plenty of beer koozies. You can sacrifice one or two. You really only need one. You end up cutting it down into four pieces to get the right size. So starting with that, um, first thing I did was I cut my fabric. Obviously I took my barrel shroud and I measured out the fabric on it so that I knew it was going to be the approximate width or length of the barrel or of the uh, barrel shroud itself. Uh, once you end up gluing it together, it is going to end up just a little bit shorter, so you, you leave room for a little bit of give there. So, now that we're on mention of that, let's go ahead and we're going to glue our two pieces together. But we're only going to glue um, three sides. I'm going to glue here, here, here. Um, I have a little, I got a little bit of glue on there already and uh, a little piece of, um, I don't know, some sort of junk got on there and glued itself into place. So I'm not too worried about that because that's going to be on the inside when I fold it back out. I'm sure you guys have sewn uh, ditty sacks or ditty bags, um, stuff sacks, and uh, the way that you sew it all up, then you pull it right side out so it looks inside out until it's right side out. So we're going to go ahead and do that first. So let me go ahead here and let me position this. I'm trying to do this all in one take, so you'll have to forgive me if it looks a little wonky as I'm doing it here. So... We're going to go ahead and start with putting a bead of super glue across there, all the way down and across here. It doesn't have to be perfect, keep in mind. We are just trying to get it approximate. I'm going to lay this right over top. If any of you have messed with super glue, you know, number one, it gets hot, but you also know that it, stick, it sticks almost instantly. So, we want to be wary of that. We want to be careful with how much of it is soaking through. And it only takes a few minutes to set up, which is nice. we're already solid so what I like to do here for trying to pull it inside out you need to be a little gentle on this part of it so we're just gonna real gently pull it out
I just don't want to tear any of the seams that I just did. See, these seams are starting to get pushed out there. Now this cotton canvas fabric I used was from an old pair of field pants that, believe it or not, had a, they were actually, they weren't cotton canvas, they were a polyester spandex blend, which give you a lot more freedom of movement. So on this fabric it does have some give to it which is nice so the thing with super glue is it does get stiff once it dries or sets there we go okay so it's not perfect but I think you guys are gonna get the idea there all right so there is that so now when we put that across our barrel shroud, you can see here the way that it's going to get rolled onto it. You can see how much of it, I can take this off, this is my adapter for the rifle. But you can see here just, and once again this is going to differ between, um, you know, between what everyone's doing. So I am covering the bulk of the barrel shroud there. It's just the two ends that are free. You have your threaded end, and then you have your your tip on it, okay? So that's that. All right. So we're on a roll. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our pieces of insulation, or the beer koozie, set up inside. Now, this is what I like to do here. I'm going to take a little bit of duct tape. I hope all you guys have duct tape. I'm sure that you do. We are going to get all of this laid out here first. Bam. Bam, bam, and bam. Right? Pretty close at least. Tape that piece on. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other side because why not? I'm going to end up having to trim this just a little bit. So when we lay that on top of there, you can see it's going to be a little off on our size so let me trim this up What's that? and then this side we're going to trim actually more than what I thought we were going to but that's all right Are we going to fit there? I think we are going to fit. I think. I hope. Then I'm going to fit down there. Yes. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and stuff that in there. So we have that in there. Now, what I'm going to work on here is making sure... I need to know how much I need to trim off here for. Because we need to get to the point where the two ends meet. 
so that when we have the grommets, when I put the grommets on it for lacing it up, they match. Now, there's something else that you can do that if you wanted to, to make it a little bit different, and this is just an option here. If you wanted to Velcro instead of tie, you could certainly do that. That is an option here. I'm looking for my Velcro. Hold on a second. There we go. So you could use like a male and a female end of scrap Velcro if you have some scrap Velcro handy. And you could sew or glue a scrap of Velcro there and here so that when you put it together it would attach. So it's just, just an idea for you guys. But that's not the way that I did it originally so we're going to stick with the way we did it originally. So here, once again, I am just simply measuring where I want this to be. Um, I roughly eyeball everything, so I know that I need to be about there, but i got to keep in mind that I'm going to be gluing it, which I'm going to just glue a flap. So I'm going to go about right there, I think. This is not rocket science. Right, so, okay, so we have that. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to trim a little bit off of where I have this. Like I said, gang, really rough, right? Really rough here. So there's that. So I am going to go ahead and glue this portion. So let's see here. Let's get this lined up again. Alright, so I'm going to glue in this whole part. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of tuck it. Okay? So we have a tuck there. Tuck that all the way in. Tucked, 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 and tucked. Use our glue. And we are going to fold that over there, 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 there. And let's get, if I can get this part there. Okay. Whew. Doesn't have to be pretty, gang. It just has to work. So that should be the last of that. Now we have our padded square. Mine's not perfectly square, unfortunately. But that's okay. That, that. So, as you can see here now, See where we're at for our square, right? Okay. So now we need to mark where we want our grommets at. Now here, you can do this as, as many as you want or as few as you want. Really doesn't matter, I guess. Um, I wonder, I wonder, can I do it like... So, I'm going to mark on this side actually, so we can do one, two, three, four, five, and six. How about that, right? Okay. 
So now this is the hard part because you need some sort of a big needle or um, a uh, uh, like a leather all punch, something like that that you can um, that you can use for cutting it. Um, if you wanted to, that's not gonna work. Be right back. So I know that my grommets are about the size of a screwdriver head. I know the screwdriver head just about fits in there. So however you want to do this, it's completely up to you. This is the hard part, so through there. So see how that goes right through there then? I just don't have the proper tool for going through is all. set up to go in. Grommet is all the way in there. So what I am going to do going to set our grommet punch in there. I was ill prepared for this part of it. Take our hammer. And we have a grommet installed, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and let me do the rest of these and I'll be right back with you. Now, as you guys can see, there, here, let me add another light on. There we go. We have our barrel shroud cover done. I have six grommets, three on each side, so that this is going to wrap around our barrel shroud itself, like so, so that we will have our protective cover to it. So, what we need to do next is get we kind of need to get us ourselves an idea of just how, of just where we want it at. So the, the way I did my first one was by wrapping it on and then I fed my cordage through to make a pattern to it. So let's go ahead and do that. There's... That side. And then on that side. My fingers don't always work so well doing this. You may need your lighter to get you know everything nice and even, obviously, as far as um your or for burning the edges of your cord so that we can make it so that it's easier to get through the grommets because it will take a while i'm just making sure they're nice and even we are even so i'm going to go right across that okay see how that goes I'm going to wrap around one side there, wrap around this side, so we're enclosing it. You can go as tight as you may want with this. So you can see when I go really tight, it closes it off almost all the way. Okay, so tight, tight. In fact, I think the way that I want to do this 
and you can change this up as you go here you can you can do it however you want I'm gonna come right across the front on that one same thing with this one here okay so that's that that's that okay so there we go so we're closed off right okay right so now let me see how I want to do this I'm gonna come through this side and come through this grommet hole here through and we'll get this one pulled through once again my fingers don't work good on this little stuff all right so there's that okay so we are pulled through there tight there now, if you have a certain level of OCD, you're going to want to even all of that out, which I do. So, I will be evening all of this out. And then what I'm going to do from there is I'm going to crisscross again. Okay. Once again, this is completely up to you guys. However you want to do this is totally fine. In fact, let me come underneath here. I'm going to come over there, so I'm going to come around and then through here. Same thing on this one here. I'm going to come around. You'll end up with a cross on it somewhat come right through into this grommet on the back side if I can get into there because it's like a stinking puzzle okay there's that one right are we looking so far gang I think pretty good right then you're gonna tighten all of that up so that's complete. It's completely up to you as to how much you are going to tighten this up. I'm going to get the bends out of my paracord there because my OCD is kicking in on that. And then what I'm going to do is I am just going to we're going to come around on that one, come around on this one. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my cord lock through there. There's one. And there will be okay so what I recommend here is okay so we're gonna tighten that up okay all right so that's tightened up but we need to close the front of it a little bit more so I'm gonna go ahead and we are going to close that out a bit more so see we have room to tighten that up right so we are gonna go ahead and pull that a little bit tighter in fact let's see here Kind of I'm pretty happy with that so far. I think the mistake up oh, no, I think I might have made a mistake there. I don't know though. No, I'm I'm pretty good with that, I think. You 
just have to learn to pull it all your sections through to keep it all nice and tight. like a puzzle, right? Like I said, guys, it's like a puzzle. Okay, so. Then let's tighten up the other side here to close that side off. And voila, we have a barrel shroud cover that can be removed or take, uh, can be removed, can be replaced, whatever it is you want to do with it, we can, um, we can do that. So what I'll do here is trim up these, uh, these tails. And then get a lighter. Melt those. And that's it. So, guys, gals, all interested parties, that, whoops, big fat hand in there, that is our brow shroud cover. Not, not fancy, not difficult, but it does its job. It protects the barrel. The shroud itself protects the barrel, and um, having that wrap on there gives it a little bit of protection for your hands for screw for um, for grabbing the barrel of your rifle, and uh, adds a little bit of a coolness factor to it. So thanks guys for pushing me to do this. Um, I'm glad I did. It um, now I have a second one, right? So um, anyways, that's it. That's all I got. Everyone, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned for uh, more fun stuff. You guys uh, keep getting at it and take care. Thanks.